Welcome to the Capital Forum interview series. My name is Sally Hubbard, and we are delighted to have Jamelia Ferris here with us today. As background, Jamelia is a partner at Hun Hunton and Williams, and previously served in the DOJ's Antitrust Division as Chief of Staff. And with that, let's go ahead and jump right in. Jamelia, how does the DOJ's front office think about cable consolidation in the broader context of telecom competition policy? Do other issues play a role, such as net neutrality and spectrum, when it's reviewing mergers? The antitrust division, whether it's in telecom, media, or any other industry, is really looking at the facts and economics underlying any particular case. So they're really, and they're bound by their competition mission. So they're always thinking about competition issues and any policies issues that enter into that are only in the context of how it's affecting competition. So if you look at NBC Comcast, certainly net neutrality played a role in the decision making there, but and in the final consent decree, but it was only to the extent it was affecting competition in the online video market place. And so to the extent that net neutrality provisions were included in the settlement with the parties, it was only to the extent it affected um, the competition um, mission of the um, Justice Department. Okay. And what is the role of the front office in telecom and, and, and uh, media merger reviews? Here again, um, in some ways, telecom and media is no different than any other merger. The antitrust division's leadership relies heavily on the staff, which plays such a key and important role in bringing any case. They're handling the investigation, they're talking to the witnesses, to the parties, they're building their case, and they're looking at the law, and they're making the recommendations to the front office. At the same time, the antitrust division leadership a hallmark of this antitrust division's leadership has really been a collaborative management approach. So while they are leading the investigations at some level, it's the staff handling, the staff making decisions, always in collaboration with the front office leadership. So at the end of the day, when it's time for decision making, the leadership of the division is sort of very well informed and um, has played a key role. But it's not unique in telecom or any other um, industry. I suppose what is unique about telecom and media is that to the extent it, of course, affects consumers' everyday lives and is such an important part of um, the marketplace today, it captures their interest, but their involvement is not different. You also have in this front office with Renata Hesse and others real expertise in the substantive I industry, so that influences their role and makes them um, an even greater important part of the team, but um, it's more a factor of those folks in the front office than anything else. So to the extent that they have expertise in the subject area, they may be more involved in kind of uh, throughout the merger review? Um, I think in uh, the antitrust divisions matter, you know, you bring these leaders to the uh, agency because they have a lot of antitrust expertise and a lot to add and um, I think they spend a lot of time thinking about how to be effective managers of an institution and good stewards of an institution that functions so well, where you have real expert trial lawyers who they rely on and collaborate with every day. And that's true in any industry. Okay, and how is the um, leadership of the front office structured? So of course you have the Assistant Attorney um, General who heads up this division. He's supported by his DAGs, those are his Deputy Assistant Attorney General. You have Renata Hesse who is the Director of Civil and Criminal Operations. So she has a civil enforcement portfolio where she manages cases. Um, she also has an operations role where she has a uh, management function over all civil and criminal cases. She kind of oversees that portfolio. Then of course you have um, Leslie Overton who also is a civil enforcement DAG. She also has international national responsibilities, um, but she manages cases and works with our international folks on um, international issues that the division looks at. Then of course um, David Galfan, who's a litigation DAG, and of course he is significantly involved in any litigation matter, but he also oversees cases, regular civil enforcement cases that may or may not head to litigation. Um, and then uh, the new criminal DAG, Brent Snyder, and Aviv Nevo, our economics, the DOJ's economics DAG, who is involved in every case and he oversees the um, economic, the economist at DOJ. Um, then they're also an important person in the front office. They have a chief counsel for competition policy, uh, Terrell McSweeney, uh, who's, you know, of course the nominee for the FTC, but uh, commissioner spot. But as long as she's there, she also plays a key role in the front office um, and other senior advisors. And you, you mentioned that uh, the front office is involved throughout the merger review. What is the level of interaction with the staff in the front, and the, and the front office? I mean, how involved uh, 
you know, how often are they speaking about a merger? How involved um, is the front office throughout the, throughout the different stages of merger review? Um, in any, mer you know, the, it's a collaboration. So in any collaboration, it's constant communication. Um, not that everybody with their own role to play. It's not as if the staff isn't off doing their investigation, gathering the facts, analyzing the law, looking at the economics all on their own. Um, and you know, that certainly goes on. They have their jobs to do on a daily basis, but it's very a collaborative relationship. Um, so on any given matter, it really depends. They meet depending on the needs of the case. Um, certainly there's, as in any structure, there's sort of regular meetings on cases and things like that. But I think it's given it's a collaborative approach and given um, the leadership of the division works so well with the staff, it's really a constant dialogue, whether it be meetings, emails, phone calls. Um, you know, what you would find in any large organization. I think this um, antitrust division is very effective at that. How does the DOJ coordinate with the FCC in telecom and media merger reviews? Well, that's a very important relationship that um, now has had some real success in this administration, um, both with the NBC Comcast case. You had um, then Christine Barney working very closely at the leadership le level with the then FCC chair. Um, and in that case, they even talked about the fact um, afterwards that they had joint case teams and they had joint review of documents, which is a very important part of that particular case. Then, of course, the agencies worked very closely together in AT&T and T-Mobile, and that was both at the leadership and the staff levels. And I can expect that that's going on today, um, including because Renata Hesse is the acting AAG, and she served ever at the FCC as a senior advisor and uh, counsel to then FCC chair during T-Mobile, and really served in that liaison role um, among her many responsibilities there between DOJ and the um, FCC, given her prior experience. I'm certain I they must be relying on that um, expertise and those relationships. Um, you know, this is, it's not also, again, not really unique just to the telecom and media space. Certainly that's the case with the FCC, but it has really been, again, a hallmark of this administration to work as one government. Uh, we've, they've talked about how that makes them good stewards of government resources to reach uh, decisions that um, make sense government-wide. And so they do that in a variety of contexts where you have government agencies with overlapping jurisdiction. They try to work collaboratively and lend expertise where they can. So what other, what other agencies besides the FCC has the DOJ worked collaboratively with? So certainly um, the PTO, they issued a joint statement with the PTO on SEP um, P issues um, about a year ago. Uh, so the Patent and Trademark Office, DOD, Department of Transportation, those are all, and then government-wide on collaborative initiatives that uh, affect broader competition policy issues. Do you find that when they're collaborating with one of the um, other agencies, that those agencies defer to the DOJ on their antitrust expertise, or that the, or that the DOJ defers to those agencies on, on their expertise, like the FCC on, on its telecom expertise, or do you think... I'm just wondering if, if there's deference shown based on the expertise of the different agencies. I think it's valuing the input. I'm not sure if it's deference in the sense of you do that, we'll do this. Um, more, we value your expertise. We each have different tools to reach one common goal. How do we best rely on those and leverage each other's um, mandates in the most effective way? That's a good point about the different tools because that's one thing that I've noticed you know, but with, between the FCC and the DOJ in terms of the merger review standards is the FCC has the public interest standard, which is broader than the of DOJ's course. mandate. Right. So that's constant communication. I think after NBC Comcast, folks talked about how, in fact, DOJ was um, instrumental in um, driving a faster timeline. You know, those decisions came out on the same day. And that only can happen when there's collaboration at all levels, at the staff levels and at the senior levels. And I think you've seen the effectiveness and how that manifested over time. What is the role of the DOJ chief of staff? Well, that really depends on the leader. They have the opportunity to use their chief of staff in the most effective way possible. You know, I had the privilege of working for five AAGs or acting AAGs in my time at DOJ, and um, I think that you know, part of my role was ensuring a seamless transition um, through a variety of leadership changes. The role depends on the matters that are before the agency. 
I, I think it's a very collaborative front office team where they work together and they try to share resources, all um, focused on the same goal. Uh, one other role of the chief of staff, you know, the antitrust division is one component of a much larger justice department. Uh, they certainly have leadership offices in the AG's office, the deputy assistant attorney general's, I'm the deputy assistant attorney general's office, and uh, the uh, associate attorney general. And at least when I was at DOJ, working with those offices was a significant part of um, my position and actually was one of the greatest privileges of being there is being able to work outside of um, just the antitrust division. And really, the whole experience is really a great privilege to have the opportunity to work with such incredible folks and real experts in the field of antitrust. Well, thanks again, Jamelia, for sitting down with us today. It was a real pleasure to get to chat with you, and I hope we can do it again soon. Thanks.